Well, hello everyone and welcome to today's Garden Life. Now we're, we're all friends here and to, this morning has been really frustrating <laughs> to me. It seemed like I just encountered one garden frustration after another and I thought, you know what? Since we're all friends here, let's get real. Let's get down and dirty and talk about some of the most vexing things that we experience in the garden and when possible, how we deal with them. So it's a no makeup kind of day. We're just gonna get out there. It's windy, it's supposed to get up to 92 today. So if that doesn't intimidate you, then why don't you hang out with me as I go through five of my biggest garden frustrations and how I try to contend with them. And then we'll take a little break. Um, I do wanna show you Hub's new Oh, it's really cool, Stuart, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. His, his new hammock and stand, he's out there at this very moment enjoying it. And then we're going to do a little project for Leah. This is a very, very belated birthday gift for her. I wanted to do some, some potting up of some plants that she got for her balcony. So I think we need to get at it. But here, you know, that said, my biggest solution to all of these frustrations is after I have had a hard morning in the garden, well, it's Sunday and pour yourself a mimosa. So, so there you go. It's all about being real. I never want to paint anything as if it's, it's always pretty. It's always perfect. There's never a problem with the cottage on the hill. Oh my goodness. That would be very disingenuous of me. So what do you say, Stuart? Let's, do it. Let's share our frustrations. <laughs> frustration will come as no surprise to you and that is the vagaries of Oklahoma weather and you could probably replace Oklahoma with whatever state of the Union you are in or whatever country you live in and you probably are experiencing the same thing I really really get frustrated trying to keep up with weather extremes so today it is well actually let me just stop for a moment where's some wood <laughs> to knock on because it's actually for this moment in time it's not very windy it has been so windy for the past few days and today it's supposed to get up to 92 so that's like the worst kind of condition I think to me is really really hot and really really windy so that is a big frustration in addition to just the fact that it just gets so hot it just gets so cold and it really is frustrating to me. So how do I have to deal with that? Well, number one, I just have to take a chill pill. And I just have to remind myself that if I want to garden, I have to accept the conditions in which I garden gracefully and to the extent I can with uh, grace and equanimity and a minimal amount of complaining except for what I do with you guys. <laughs> because I know you feel my pain. I know you really do. There, was, uh, there were some people here from Lubbock, Lubbock yesterday and they said well, one of the reasons we watch you is because we so can relate to some of the yeah, things right. you say. But it's not just them, we all have these same frustrations. So this morning I came out and, it, and despite the wind, it was really kind of beautiful. And look over here. I saw, and it was, it was windy earlier on, and I saw all of these very unperturbed pollinators on the salvia. By the way, this is East Friesland. I mean, look at all of them. Look at oh, all of the bees, all of the butterflies. It's a little bit early in the season for any of the really large dramatic monarchs or swallowtails, but nevertheless, they seem to be unperturbed. And I thought, you know, I just need to be more of a creature of nature and just try not to be so frustrated and drive myself so crazy with what the weather holds. Now, am I zen about it all the time? Absolutely not, but I can do some things to mitigate some of the effects of those weather extremes. So on really, really windy days, I know I'm gonna have to water more. That's just the way it is, especially if I have to water things and get them established like these little dahlias. 
that my friend Carlina Elizabeth brought me starts of the other day. I know I have to do that. I want to do it first thing in the morning when it's still relatively cool, not in the heat of, of the day or the sunniest part of the day like it is right now because we're shooting. But uh, that's one thing. I get up earlier and I try to address my chores and handle the nature, the conditions of nature earlier in the day when they aren't so extreme. So earlier in the morning, it's still cooler. Typically the wind hasn't really, really picked up. I can enjoy the calm of the morning, be mindful of the insect wildlife and other beautiful pollinators in the garden. And I can try to make myself not be quite so frustrated and just know that even though it might be a weather extreme for one type of plant, that in, in another respect it might be good for another type of plant. So what do I mean by that? Well, hot and windy conditions are really terrible for things like tulips, they're terrible for these pansies, they're terrible for violas, but in my head, I have simultaneously been thinking, oh, but I wish these little seedlings of boxwood basil will hurry up. Well, I can have one thing or I can have the other, but I can't have both. So instead of concentrating on what is on the downhill, I'm choosing to concentrate on what like what likes these kind of conditions, namely things like the darling little boxwood basil that are under this cloche. You can see the little seedlings down there and the other things that really, really like the heat. And I'll be talking about those a little bit later, but just take it, take it day by day. Try not to let it depress you too much. Um, I know it sounds like in the scheme of things, these are definitely uh, first world problems, I understand that. But as gardeners, I think you guys can relate to me. So that's my question of the day. Do you feel my pain? <laughs> can, can you relate to just how frustrating it is to, to navigate the emotional highs and lows of gardening? It's, it's in the highs and lows of gardening in nature. It can be really frustrating. One thing on a practical basis, <laughs> that I have done is I finally found a really good garden hose. I've showed you guys this a lot, but it reminds me to tell you about it because I was talking to my son in Denver yesterday who is starting to garden in his new home and he was messing with a nasty old heavy rubber hose and I thought to myself oh honey let me just share some of the wisdom of the ages you need to get one of these these no kink lightweight uh, garden hoses because they are just wonderful so I, I think when I go up there to help him with his garden I will definitely gift him one so that's helped me a little bit on the margins you know having a uh, having a hose that isn't just so difficult to lug around and and I just, instead of trying to look at things in the hole and what it's doing, I can look at individual beautiful things. So I think the, the, just the, the number one frustration that I have is just dealing with the differences in gardening. And I would love any tips that, you, that tips that you have. Those are just a few things that I do is try to get out when it's not quite so extreme, whatever that extreme is, the cold, the wind, the rain, the heat and other things to try to just avoid it before I run inside and just um, try not to slip my wrists. I'm saying that kiddingly, people. I'm saying that kiddingly. Let's move on to frustration number two. Okay, number two. This morning I finally had the time to go and look at some of the places that I visit on my daily round, or on not my daily, but my regular rounds in gardening season to see what I could pick up to plant the window box. And I was a little bit frustrated because the things that I was looking for, I just couldn't find. It was a little bit too early in the season, I guess. Not so much for the plants themselves, but for the vendors to supply those plants. And so I reminded myself of something that I used to tell my clients when I was doing more consulting. And that is I would try to give them a plant list, let's say for a container planting or for the container um, of all time, like a large window box. And I would give them a list and I would say, but if you can't find this, then look for this. And if you can't find this, then look for that. 
And so I decided that I needed to embrace that same mentality. If I can't find what's on my list, then don't be a slave to my list. Be open to other options that may be there. So what do I mean by that? Well, in filling the window box, I was very specifically looking for things like lantana and pentas and scaviola, things that I grew successfully last year that I wanted to grow again this year, but it's just, I guess, a little bit too early in the season. And since I like to get all of my things in the ground to the extent possible before the heat, which relates to frustration number one. <laughs> um, I was looking for those, but they weren't available. So I was getting frustrated thinking, okay, I can't find this, I can't find that. I ha this is the one opportunity I have to locate these things right now. And then I decided, oh, Linda, get over yourself. There are multiple right options. So while I was really wanting some pink pentas and some lantana and stuff and couldn't find them, what could I find? I found some wave petunias that can likewise handle the heat. They will cascade over the edge of the window box. They're part of the color palette of blue, yellow, gray, and white that I wanted for the window box in addition to pink, of course. And I thought, okay, so there are multiple right answers. So embrace the answer that presents itself, and that was wave petunias. I no longer buy the regular petunias because they last a nanosecond before they succumb to you know, just everything, the heat, the drought. So I want to get these in before it gets hot and we are supposed to cool down later this week. So I'm going to fill this with not only the vervain that I planted earlier and some of the ajuga and some of the Dusty Miller, but I will plant this with some of this wonderful, these wonderful wave petunias. And this isn't bubble gum and I don't think it was marked, so I'm not sure what color pink this is. What did you say? Embrace the answer that presents itself? Yes. I love that. Oh, is that kind of zen? Really Embrace cool. the answer that presents itself instead of looking for, their, sometimes there are multiple right answers. Really? So I'm going to fill this with these petunias. I haven't grown them that much in the past. Uh, I haven't thought of myself <laughs> as a petunia kind of person, but I am willing to open myself to a new form of, <laughs> of uh, personal expression and identification. So I'm gonna fill this, and then when those other plants become available, because I do know I want them not only for the beautiful aesthetic of the window box, but also because of their ability to attract pollinators, that I will just put them in when they become available. The advantage to that is that the things that I plant in here now, like this beautiful sunshine ligustrum that I am going to prune on a little bit more, it will have more space to fill out and that way they might be more successful. So sometimes I, if I can't find what I want, then I also need to let patience be one of the solutions and let the things that are in, that I plant in here, uh, take on a bigger volume instead of having more of the same. Does that make sense? Leah was saying I need to hold, do a whole new category called, does that make <laughs> sense? So that is what I'm doing for that. I also wanted to plant some scaviola in here, but I couldn't find any of the six packs, the four inch uh, uh, planters. I couldn't find any of the smaller versions of scaviola, but what could I find? A hanging basket. Now I could leave it in this form, let it uh, maintain its integrity, keep the integrity of the hanging basket and the potted form intact, or I could later remove the hanging portion. This is a video all in itself. We may <laughs> need to do an Instagram short on this. This is really brutal, you guys, but today it's about our uglies. Remove it from its pot and look to see, oh, well, maybe I can divide this one plant into four different parts. That's Get right. out my bread knife. I think I've got my serrated bread knife in here, which I do. And I could just divide this up into four parts. Not only is this a solution to my frustration of not being able to find the individual plants, but it also sometimes can be a money-saving tip. If you take one plant and you divide it into four parts, it's 
often less expensive than it is to buy them individually. And not only that, a lot of times they're more mature in the hanging basket form. They may claim, they may complain for a little while, like I'm complaining throughout <laughs> this video. They may complain, they may droop for a little while, but ultimately they have an attitude adjustment and they really will be beautiful again. So that is another way to deal with the frustration of I can't find what's on my list in short order, then change your list and your attitude towards the list. Okay, another thing that commonly frustrates me is that I have an idea in my head, just like my list I, I had in my head earlier, and I can't make I can't make that vision or that look, I can't make it manifest. So what I really wanted was a little bit more symmetry and a little bit more, well, let's just call it what it is, perfection. I really wanted the expression of my upper terrace to be perfect. And nothing is perfect, it's never going to be. And I find in my head that I am constantly pointing out, even to garden visitors, oh, you should have seen it last week. Or I, it would be great except for this. Well, you know what? Linda, get over yourself. It doesn't have to be perfect. Sometimes good enough is good enough. Pretty is just pretty. And quit trying to, um, torture yourself and your garden into a state of perfection that doesn't exist. So here's an example of that. So over here I was thinking, oh, I really wanted this to be perfectly symmetrical right here. I really wanted this side to mirror this side. And that just wasn't going to happen. And boy, do we have a loud helicopter. We have a loud helicopter and also some viewers going by. Um, and so I just decided then it doesn't have to be symmetrical. Actually, the cottage itself, even though these railings to the contrary gives it an illusion of symmetry, the cottage itself really is asymmetrical. Okay, so just rethink what I thought was a given. These can be kind of the same, they can relate to one another, but they don't have to be perfectly symmetrical. So since I think this one boxwood is dying, that's okay, I may take it out and I may replace it with some of this beautiful carnation, low growing carnation right here. So sometimes you have to give up on an idea of what you thought you wanted and make a decision to want something else based on the realities that present themselves. So that was true over here. I constantly was frustrated and I told you guys ad nauseum, okay, it bothers me that there's not more visual weight over here. I wanted more visual weight over here and I wanted it in instantaneously. Well, you know what? There were some things that I could do from a design design perspective to make that happen. I could move a pot, I could transplant a boxwood. But basically, I just need to be patient and let Mother Nature take her course because ultimately, all of these other things are going to grow up they're going to mature. They're going to create the textural composition that I want, and I just have to be patient. It's a moment in time, and I am comparing a moment in time against the ideal of the time when I know it will be at its best and at its its um, at its its culmination, at its peak. And I need to quit doing that. I need to just relax and know that yes, it's going to take some time for this rose to meet the height of the other. It's going some uh, height, you know, <laughs> height, height, that's been fascinating. It's an ongoing thematic, I think, in this, in this, um, in this, this video post and in, and in others. So I, I just need to get over myself and I need, just need to chill out. And you can tell from the way I'm talking that I really have been frustrated by these things. Um, but I think sometimes complaining about things is not a bad thing because it helps us work through the mental process of finding solutions to things that frustrate us. So right now I am just deciding that, oh, Maybe there's not enough 
visual way here, but boy, look at how these plants are enjoying all the increased air circulation and the additional foot room that they have as they spread out their roots and they will be that much healthier and that much more vigorous in the process. So that is another frustration. Just quit comparing my current situation against what I think is the peak manifestation of my garden design. Okay, it's true in raising a family and it's true in the garden as well. And that is, don't always compare one sibling against the other. I knew you were going there. <laughs> and in this case, I have done that. I have an absolutely gorgeous Encore Azalea topiary right here that I have transplanted into these concrete pots. It looks beautiful and I and I do love it. Now I am frustrated by the fact that as beautiful as it looks, I don't have the perfect companion to it here on the other side. What I need to do is reassess and say, what is it that you need? <laughs> What is it that you need to realize your potential? You are not dead, but for some reason you are not thriving. And so I tried to really think through the process of this frustration by putting it in terms of what do you need? And what it needs, I think, is some holly tone. So I gave it a fol uh, not a foliar feed, but a granular feed with some of this holly tone. I put it around the perimeter of the pot according to the package directions and then I watered it in really really well. Now what I did not do is feed the other one because I assumed that it probably is doing just fine since it's performing well and it is putting out lots of blooms and I didn't want to over fertilize it. This one however seemed deficient in nutrients so I just fed this not too long ago. I think it was a couple of days ago and I believe it's already showing some signs of reinvigoration and doing what I hope it will eventually do. Now if it decides to finally succumb and it just doesn't want to live with me anymore then I will mourn its passing, thank it for its service. But when I can still do something about it as an intervention method to make it look as good as the other one does then my my problem, I guess, is, is addressed by the solution of asking the question, what do you need? And what it needed in this instance is a Spoma Holly Tone, and yes, we will put a link below. Well, one vexation that I have over and over again, and that is keeping things straight and keeping things from blowing over in that proverbial wind that is constantly blowing down our Oklahoma plains. So one solution that I discovered was that I had the guys help me bury the umbrella stand to the umbrella that's on the social patio you can see here. Now, it did do something. It made this a little bit shorter, perhaps, than I would like, but that did two things. Number one, because it was at a lower point, the wind doesn't seem to affect it as much. In addition to the additional, addition to the additional stability, <laughs> it gets from being planted into the ground. So I thought, since I'm constantly being frustrated by things that are blowing over in the garden, particularly right now in the back, I thought, well, maybe I can extrapolate from this situation to one in the back. So Stuart, what do you say? We haven't snapped anywhere for a while. Let's do it. So in this instance, I have these olive trees and they are, historically, they have been sitting in these plant stands. You can see there's one over there that is not yet in its plant stand. And when I just had the plant stand on the ground, they just kept blowing over and they were never straight. Now that just kind of drove me crazy. So you might say, well then Linda, take them off of the plant stands. And yes, I could do that, but it also didn't give them much stability since they're on this pedestal. And in addition, they didn't have the additional height that I wanted from the plant stand itself. 
off. So I decided what worked in the front might work in the back. And so I just took a shovel and I buried the legs of this plant stand. Now it took it a while for me to get them level, but eventually I did. And now I'll just come in, I will dress this up. I'll put another, I'll put another bag of mulch and I think it'll be good. Stuart, you have a comment? So, there, so, this, so these two plant stands are the same size? Those two plant stands are the same size. Now I get it, okay. Now you get it. Buried. So, so <laughs> yes, so they are buried and these are pretty secure. Get to where now, show especially, both. they will be especially secure when I stomp in the dirt around the legs themselves and I, I really tap it in to make sure that there is stability. So I think that will be fine and I get that additional maybe six to eight inches of height. And also it is on a foundation that is broader than the width of the pedestal that's attached to the pot. So likewise, I will be doing that same thing over here and it will not only help me because it will make it have grander stature and make it look taller, but also when I get ready to prune these, I won't have to bend over quite as far. And I think they have more of a presence, more of a dramatic presence. So I will do the same thing over here with my Root Slayer shovel, which helped me really penetrate as deeply as I needed to get down into the ground. And I will be careful and mindful that these are both as even as I can get them. But if they're not, guess what? I'm trying to just not let perfection be the enemy of the good, and I will deal with it at that point because probably no one is really going to notice it but me, <laughs> and so I just need to be more relaxed about it. So that is another thing. Now, another frustration that I have, this is my bonus frustration, is that recently I have tried to move them, some things that were just too heavy for me and it was probably unwise for me to try to move them since patience is not really a, a strong suit of mine I and I really hate and and by the way I must point this out hubs hasn't been able to help me with really heavy things because of the pinched nerve in his back that we are still trying to recover from or he is still trying well we are yeah, still trying right. to recover from um, and so but I still I want something done and I bet you guys do too. I still need something it, it's done. so hard. You want it done and you want it done then and I am the worst about that. Worst about that. And I would say that when I talk to garden clubs and their older gardeners like myself or even older, that's one of their biggest frustrations is how do you just get things done? Well, my solution to that problem right now at least in the moment is get Stuart to do it. <laughs> because he is stronger than in myself right now and so I just prevail upon him to do my heavy lifting for me to help with really kind of awkward things and then what I do and here is our surprise is while he is working then I just kind of chillax in the new hammock that I got for Hubs as an early Father's Day present. That, by the way, I think matches the pillows and everything, not to mention the growing plants and the color palette for the backyard living room brilliantly, I think. So while I am here, Stuart can be working. <laughs> And I kind of like that. I kind of like, <laughs> I kind of like that construct. Now, some of you said, well, you're by, right by the air conditioner and you're in sun. Well, right now at this point in day of the day, I am in sun, but typically this area is very shady. And it's mobile. And it's mobile, and I don't think that would be a problem. There's another area that we could locate it. But also, I noticed earlier that, first of all, we haven't had to have the air conditioner run too much. I do like the way this sways, which helps me with all of my frustrations. Um, but even when it was on, it's more like white noise. It's kind of like when you were a kid. They're not, it's not that loud. It's yeah. not that loud. It's kind of comforting and it's kind of like sleeping to your mom's vacuum when you were a kid. So that's an, an, another way that I can address something. And I have to say, I think Hubs was really excited 
about this. I love the way it matches the vibrancy of it and how it matches the color palette of, of the back and how it really does harmonize beautifully with the pillows that I got. And that was just kind of a... It's we like just, they were made Yeah, together. we just kind of eyeballed it. But nevertheless, I think it worked out beautifully. And so as the backyard living room is finished, and as I now just can, can enjoy it and putter, I thought it would, be, it would be nice to kind of share with you the fact that while I'm relaxing now and I'm happy, that I, like you, have all of the same frustrations and I, like you, have to figure out ways to address them. So thank you for letting me vent. <laughs> I appreciate your friendship and you guys being there for me. Let me know what some of your biggest frustrations are and how you address them because what is a solution for you might be a solution for someone else who is reading your comment. So you guys take care and now, Stuart, I think we need to move this out of the way so we can do some potting for Leah. Well, this is a surprise. It's a belated surprise. I'm a little bit embarrassed because Leah's birthday was March 21st, and that was when I was in the throes of doing all of the home and garden tours. And so I really wasn't able to get her anything for her birthday. So this is a belated birthday present because I know she's getting ready to style her balcony off of her bedroom. I also happen to know that she went to Bricks the other day, and our mutual friend Jen there helped her pick some things out. Now, Leah left them here because she was going to go out of town and she wanted me to water them for her. So I'm going to surprise her. I ordered some of these pots that I think she will like. I kind of know her style and I'm going to pot all of the stuff she left here and surprise her for a belated birthday present. So she doesn't know that I am doing this and she just thinks she's gonna come back and pick these up. And when she picks them up, they will be potted in these fun containers. Now these are just basic terracotta, but they are not traditional. They have a little bit more of a contemporary vibe. And Leah likes, she likes granny chic, but she also is young and she kind of likes some contemporary things. I like these not only because I think they have that vibe and they will age and they, I just, they have that organic quality I like, but also because these come with their own saucers, custom fit saucers. The other reason that I like these is because, I, you know, I like these in three. So I got two sets of three, and I also like them because they come with these little round pieces of screening that you just plop down above the hole of the pot so that the dirt doesn't leak through. So. These are things that she picked out. Now, if any plant looks like Leah, this would be it. <laughs> because she is a living daisy, I think. And she also wanted some edibles, and so Jen helped her pick, pick out some edibles. Okay, so obviously, this is the largest one, and it happens to fit perfectly in one of these pots, which will hold a gallon size plant brilliantly. Okay, this is a, what is this? This is a Pompanet English Daisy mix or English Daisy. So this probably, I mean, this is, a, this is pretty much a no brainer, you guys. I'm just gonna loosen up the rip ball a little bit and pot it in here. Ta now, ta-da, yes. I love these kind of instant things where you don't have to struggle. But what's good about this too is that I will, I will tell Leah that as cute as this is, it really doesn't like the heat. So this will be a fun spring planting for her to enjoy, then thank it for its surface and either relegate it to the compost pile or, you know, give it to somebody who's got a garden and maybe they have a microclimate where it will work. So that is number one. And once I gift her these, I think maybe, don't you guys think we need, that might be my question of the day. Don't you think we need to go over to Leah's balcony and see it and style it on her behalf, help her style it? Not that she couldn't do it on her own, but it would be a fun thing to do. Okay, so there's number one. Obviously, I will water that. 
Now I'm not giving these any supplemental food. I'm not putting osmocote or anything in these planting pots. Why? Because my potting mix already has some slow release fertilizer in it. Okay, so number two, okay, this. How cute is that? That in and of itself just makes me smile. So since this fits almost perfectly, and in fact, the only reason that I'm not just leaving it in here is because I don't like the way that plastic rim looks above the pot. So I'm gonna put just a little bit of soil down at the bottom. This one is not root bound, so I am not going to disturb its roots. This is a beautiful, well, it doesn't say what variety, but it just looks like some kind of burgundy leaf lettuce. And Leah is learning about edibles, edimentals. So this will be a fun scholastic enterprise for her. And I will tell her that greens like cool temperatures. And as soon as it gets hot, she might want to replace this maybe with some basil or something. Stuart thinks that's funny. Stuart, why is that funny? Anytime we mention Oklahoma heat and how it's going to kill something. <laughs> okay, there we go. There is number two. And where is its little pot or little saucer? Does it go like that or does it go like this? Oh, it can go both ways. That's cute. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's just discovered that. Okay, now let's move on to the next one. Now I think because I really want this to grow and grow big, I, and she's gonna have to bring this in. I think I'm gonna put this fern leaf lavender, I'm gonna put both of these in a big pot and hopefully they will continue, they will continue to grow. So I'm gonna do that and I think this is a really good draining potting blend so I'm not too worried that, you know, lavender likes it on the dry side. It really doesn't want too much water Sometimes I just grow lavender as a short-term enterprise and knowing that it may not want to live with me, it may not want to make a commitment to me, in which case then, so be it. Okay, this, I'm gonna loosen up the root ball a little bit. I'm gonna leave this plant tag in here and maybe I should put that plant tag back in there. She has a little plant stand on the balcony. Yeah, she has a little plant stand, it's very cute. Actually, actually, as I recall, I think she has a couple of the ones like I do. Didn't we get her a couple of the ones from my QVC line? Oh, yeah. Maybe, oh, maybe yeah. not four of them, but maybe three of them. That, that was last year, so I kind of can't remember. Okay. Oh, yum. Yum, yum, yum. This smells, smell smells divine. And I thought I had watered these before torturing them, but maybe I didn't. So I will water these immediately after. This is, this is joyful planting. This is, it's so easy, so much immediate gratification. And not only that, it's for a dear friend who will so appreciate it. And not only will she appreciate it, she's got two roommates and I think they will appreciate it too because they're, they're, you know, they're the generation, that farm to table generation and, and growing your own stuff. And they like to cook. Okay, so there is another one. If I don't break them, okay. Okay, I'm liking how this is coming together. What about you, Stuart? Okay, I've got a couple more now. Leah did mention to me, so I know she knows this. Don't plant this mojito spearmint in the ground. And why? Because it will take over the universe. And so she knows not to do that. She got some, she said, because she wanted to put it in a pot so that she could indeed make her own mojitos. I have some in a container. It may 
easiest way out of the out of the yeah you told me that you th you were kind of smug and you th I think you said you thought oh for years it didn't do it and then it finally and then finally it broke the bonds of yeah. earth now it's kind of everywhere and that, yeah <laughs> it smells good yeah <laughs> now I don't have to worry about this because my neighbor has as much mint as I can consume she said probably got it, 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 yes, it did too. Now she makes, and I think this would be fun, she makes, she said, a, a cauliflower tabbouleh with mint. You know, that kind of uh, grated cauliflower? Or what's oh, it called? Yeah, no, what's yeah. it called? Uh, sorry, the wind got me there. Yeah, uh, uh, you know, the cauliflower when it's all. Well, yeah, they make mashed potatoes out of it. Yeah, there. yeah. It's really good. Okay. Sure, yeah. Now this is kind of, that's kind of sweet like that. And again, this will be good because I don't think on her, on her paved balcony that it can do too much harm. So there's her mojito mint. Again, I'm gonna water these really well. Oh, go down in there, mojito mint. There we go. And her lavender. Okay, she's got one, so I can toss that one. Okay, now the question is, I have just two more pots, and what do I want to do? Okay, here is a money-saving tip, you guys. When you buy Swiss chard or any kind of greens that are planted all at once in one pot, and boy, look at this. This gives me so much joy because look at the color of the roots. The color of the roots mimic the color of the stems of this bright light Swiss chard. So my tip is this, very, very gently tease apart the different plants. So I could put all of these in here as one and that would restrict their size. They would all grow together and it would be beautiful. Or I could separate them like this and over time, individually, they will be as large as when they were grouped together. And especially when you're potting these in the ground, that is a money saving tip where you separate them and you get multiple plants out of one container. So this one, because I like the way it looks and there'll be a great color echo with that lettuce. And by the way, again, these were all ones that Leah picked out. So I'm hoping she is very surprised when she sees that I have done all of the work for her. I need a little bit more dirt. I'll be right back. And I'm planting these so that the top of the pot is level with the top of the planter. Now she can feed these with any kind of liquid, uh, soluble kind of plant food. And I always say when people ask me, oh, just go for something tried and true and proven like a spoma. Um, and you can do a spoma liquid in the ground. I a lot of times will use like a spoma start, which is a granular. You can get it in granular or a liquid form. And what's fun is for a single person, this is perfect because she can just clip little bits of all of these things and use them. And then they will regenerate. And especially the leaf lettuce, it will put out new leaves, at least until it gets too prohibitively hot. Okay, this ice cream mix celosia, this will really, now this is one of those plants that will really be able to take the heat and that she may want to pot on into a larger pot later. But right now it looks very, very sweet. Just like Leah, very, very sweet. Just like those English daisies. Leah was born in London. He may not have known that. Okay. Okay, there's one. I think I need one more pot for the remainder of this chard. Let's see. Therein lies the brilliance of my potting area and my, my 
potting, shelving over there. I can just grab whatever I need. Put this in here. A little piece of debris. Boy, that wind is kicking up again, Stuart. It has been, well, it's March. In like a lion, out like a lamb. Well, I'm waiting for the lamb to appear. However, I guess by the time you guys see this, it will be April. March will be behind us. Can you believe that the calendar is progressing so quickly? I can't. Okay, now I need a little bit more dirt, but what I'm going to do is use the remains of what is on my indispensable little potting tarp. Now some of these are yellow, and I'm just going to take off any of the yellowing leaves, and again, this will regenerate. It will regenerate beautifully. Okay, so there you go. I've potted all these up. Let me clean up my mess, and we'll get kind of an idea of the display and how they will look on her plant stands on the balcony. 